Hello and welcome to the launch of eCognition 8 and to the opening of the eCognition User Summit 2009. Tonight we'll have the opportunity to learn about the exciting changes which will have been introduced in eCognition 8 along with insights into the strategic direction that will drive future versions. We see especially object-based analysis with the rule sets behind as, as a fantastic mechanism because this is a way to really standardize its, its human readable formats. So it's, it's very much possible also for the, the non-expert to, to apply such algorithms and um, use them on a, on a larger context. Please join me in welcoming Ralph to the stage. For this launch, for the start of the journey, we, we thought of a good place to start with, right? And we felt, hey, this IMAX theater is a great place. So um, some of you may know what, what does IMAX mean? It actually means image maximum. And this is what we do. We maximize the power and the potential of images. Ecognition 8 is a bit of a milestone. It, it opens a new chapter. Uh, there's a lot of new and exciting opportunities for participation that'll come over the coming year new collaboration opportunities and what they'll find in future versions of eCognition is um, the product is not just their image analysis tool but it's also a hub, a hub for development and delivery of applications. What we're going to get into and what we're going to show you is the novel approaches, the unique innovations and uh, the years of research and development that we're able to leverage to bring this product to you tonight. Uh, all that really sums up to what one theme that we call new OBIA dimensions. So we're delivering new dimensions on the OBIA theme. A second uh, key point in this, uh, this launch of eCognition 8 is the emergence of eCognition Architect. So eCognition Architect we've had in the product lineup, as you saw from the, from the timeline for a number of years now. Uh, however, with this release, it really becomes a focal point in the development and delivery of production level applications. Another great improvement that we have in this version is performance. So we have radical performance improvement in eCognition 8. I'm talking about inherent performance improvement within the existing product. So when you're using eCognition 8 versus use, using eCognition 7, you're not getting a little bit of an improvement. You're getting a, a fantastic and very uh, dramatic improvement in, in your performance. Now we, we essentially support all the different file formats which are out there in the geo world. We support vector, we support raster, now we support point clouds. And on top of that, we also support 3D data sets and time series. Development for eCognition 8 actually lasted for close to two years, and we implemented more than 500 individual new features. If you look at the time um, it took to, perfor to, to perform a segmentation on a data set, um, 7 or 20 by 20,000 pixel with a scale parameter of 50, um, that took close to four minutes on version 7. With version 8, that was brought down to merely 1.5 minutes. So if you translate that into the size or into the area of images that you can segment within two minutes, um, eCognition 7, you could segment um, 15 by 15,000 pixels within two minutes. eCognition 8, now you can do 20 by 20,000 pixels, which is a performance increase of 45%. If you look at load times in eCognition 7, you can also see that you had ample time to actually get your coffee because loading a data set of 20 by 20,000 pixel um, took around two minutes. So with eCognition 8, that time was drastically brought down um, to only 15 seconds. So if you look at that data set, it's a quick bird scene with a resolution of 60 centimeter covering part of um, Japan. And the task to solve would be to find all the islands um, around that area. And now maps provide a very efficient way to do that um, very quickly by simply downscaling that data set um, so that you get a, a s sort of a low resolution version of your image, which is only like a tenth of the size of the original map. And in that map, you will find the islands really in no time. That's very fast and efficient. You can then use the concept of regions and the rescaling to single out all the islands you have found, bring them back into the full resolution, copy them in little individual maps, and perform the detailed analysis on these maps. So that allows you to identify and work on all the different islands in a very fast manner. Finally, when you've found all the, the islands, you can copy these back into your main map. So this is sort of a typical application or workflow that you would use and apply with the new concept of maps. 
So if you look at that example of finding islands on a, on a large quickbird scene, um, this is really a, a challenging task. It's like finding needles in a haystack, and in, in version 7, you would really need to segment the entire data set to find all the areas that you're interested in. And to do that, you, it took around 20 minutes to actually do that, which is actually not too bad. So it's not for that large an image, um, quite a good performance. But if you now look at the time it takes on eCognition 8, um, I think you agree that that's quite an astonishing gain in performance. So since LiDAR analysis is also, or bringing LiDAR into a raster space is also quite a challenging task, um, we broke down the problem into a couple of different um, areas, let's say, and implemented solutions for that. The first one is to actually load and rasterize the LiDAR data sets. Therefore, we implemented a data driver which will load the LiDAR data set and at the same time rasterize it and bring it into your project. Um, as a second step, we implemented an algorithm which allows you to actually get, have access from within your recognition project to the LiDAR data. So you can derive any information from that LiDAR data set and use it in your project, um, which helps quite a bit to, to sort of use only those areas or those um, data sets which you need for your analysis. Um, but it also allows you to keep your, your disk space very low because um, the, the layers which you generate from LiDAR can be kept in a temporary way, which means um, they don't take up all that many disk space. The final approach or final component that we added was also the ability to rescale LiDAR data. Similar as in the MAPS concept, you can now take your LiDAR data set, um, load it in a rougher resolution, and then maybe only look at, let's say, urban areas in full resolution. So that, again, uh, is very helpful for the performance aspect. So now, with eCognition 8, you can make use of all the different data sets which are out there in the geo world. You can use raster data sets, you can use vector data sets, Finally, you can introduce point clouds directly in your projects, and you can use that to build better applications. For this version, we have focused on two different types of generalization. One being um, making square shapes properly square. So especially for buildings, for example, we focused on really squaring up buildings. Um, another one is to make sort of smooth outlines or organic shapes more smooth. So especially like forest cover outlines, lake shores and so on, um, now can be made properly smoothed and we have implemented a pixel growing and reshaping algorithm which allows you to do that very efficiently and also very fast. So I hope you agree that the results we can now pull out of eCognition 8 look much more GIS ready. eCognition Labs will provide you access to new functionality and new um, data drivers as well as rule sets, which make use of the functionality implemented in eCognition 8, which is full capability to analyze 3D data. I created a, a short clip which will show you how actually that can be implemented in a real example. And that shows for the first time, I think, 3D object-based image analysis. So on the top right side, you will see the, uh, a raster data stack in 3Ds from the top view. The two top, uh, two bottom windows show the front and the side view of the data set. And in the top right side, you will see a 3D rendering of the results taken from that data set. So now you can really analyze and segment real volumes out of 3D data. Um, the point cloud basically is, is sort of resembled in a, in a 3D data stack. And that allows you to, to analyze that data in, in full 3D.